like it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make my sugar plum fairy blanket. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects. And you're not going to want to miss out at the very end of the video. So you're going to want to stick around. I actually listed out all of the possible different types of blanket measurements that you could possibly make this blanket in and I will include an approximate foundation row chain count along with approximately how many rows you will need to make and here's the kicker I'm also going to include approximately how many skeins of yarn or how many yards of yarn you will need to make that blanket I figured that out for you for this blanket and I'm really excited. So if you are curious at all about any of that information, you're going to want to stick around to the very end of the video where I have made a chart that I'm going to stick on the end. And if you want, you can pause the video and find the blanket size you want to make, gather up all of your information, all of your materials and be ready to go. All right. I will also include a link in the notes section exactly how to follow the pattern for this blanket if you choose to make this blanket in the future as well as I will include a link so you can print out the chart and have it forever if you want. <laughs> so let's go ahead and dive right into what materials you're going to need to make this sugar plum fairy blanket. The materials that you're going to need to make the sugar plum fairy blanket will include a size five weight bulky or chunky yarn. In the case of this particular blanket, I used I Love This Chunky Yarn in the color Heathered French Lilac. And that gave me that beautiful purple color that I made this blanket in. But really, you can use whatever color that you like as long as it is the size five bulky, chunky weight yarn, okay? You're going to need a crochet hook, size P or 11 and a half millimeter crochet hook, and a pair of scissors. That's all you're going to need to make this blanket. If you are curious how many yards of yarn you will need, meters of yarn, ounces of yarn, you will need to complete your project. Stay tuned to the very end of the video where I have made a chart that includes all the many different blanket sizes, how many yards of yarn you will need to complete that project, how many meters and how many ounces of yarn you will need. I also will include how many chains are in the foundation row approximately and approximately how many rows you will need to make to make your desired blanket size. It's so great. Okay, so once you've gathered all of your materials, let's go ahead and start making this amazing sugar plum fairy blanket. We begin with our yarn and our crochet hook, starting our project with a long enough tail to weave in the end at the end of the project. So I give myself about three, four inches and then I create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook, and we are ready to go. Okay, this pattern is worked in a multiple of two. So I'm going to just be making a small example swatch for you. That way I'm not making an entire blanket and getting through everything. I'm going much faster so I can show you what to do quicker. In my example swatch, I'm going to chain 20 chains. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, 19, and 20. Great. Okay, so once you've reached the last chain for your desired blanket, here's what you're going to do. You're going to half double crochet in the third chain from your crochet hook. So looking at our chains, remember the loop on our crochet hook does not count as a chain. So one, two, three. Going to half double crochet in that third chain. Perfect. And then you're going to make one half double crochet in each chain all the way across to the very end. And that is your row one. You should end row one with two less stitches than were in your foundation row. So for me, I changed 20, but in my row one, I should only have 18 half double crochets. 
I used those other two chains as my turning chain to get me onto row one, okay? So go ahead and continue putting one half double crochet in each chain all the way across row one, and I will meet you at the end of row one to show you what to do next. 17 and 18, great. Okay, once you have made your very last stitch for your row one, we're going to chain two, one, two, turn our work, and now we are all set up to do row two. The chain two does not count as a stitch, okay? We are not counting the chain two as a stitch. In the first stitch space right here, we're making one half double crochet. So I'll actually take my pinky and kind of pull back the chain two, making room for everything. There we go. Half double crochet in that very first stitch. And now we're set up for our pattern. The pattern we are using for this particular blanket is a half double crochet cross stitch. Here's how it's done. We're going to skip this next stitch in the second stitch or third, so one, two, three. So skip one, next one, make a half double crochet. Perfect, all right? Now you're going to half double crochet in that skipped stitch. So yarn over, insert your crochet hook into that skipped stitch yarn over, pull through, and really extend it, like pull that yarn up, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Let it stay loose. Try not to make your stitches too tight here. We want our stitches loose so the blanket is much more comfortable. And that is your first half double crochet cross stitch. Let's do that again. Skip the next stitch half double crochet in the following stitch. Okay. And then half double crochet in that skipped stitch. So yarn over, insert our crochet hook into that skipped stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then I'll actually keep pulling a little bit, allowing some slack there, allowing it to be little more loose, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. That is what the stitch will look like. Okay, now the only thing that might get you is the stitch that we started with might look like a regular stitch, but what you don't see, because we made this half double crochet stitch over the first, is this stitch right here already has that first half double crochet stitch in it. So be mindful of where your stitches are, that way you don't accidentally use a stitch two times, okay? All right, so we're going to continue this half double crochet cross stitch pattern all the way down row two, and I will meet you at the end of row two to show you how we move on. Okay, last three stitches here. Okay, so skip one, next one, half double crochet, half double crochet in the skipped stitch. You should be left with just one stitch left over <laughs> remaining. You're gonna half double crochet in that last stitch. And that's it, you've just closed off row two. Row two is done. Okay, to move on to row three, you're going to chain two. And this is the repeat pattern for every single row here on out to finish your project. After every single row, you will chain two. One, two. You will turn your work. Every single row, you will put one half double crochet in the very first stitch. 
great. And then continue on doing the half double crochet cross stitch pattern for every single row. It's just repeat, repeat, repeat. Pretty easy. So yarn over, gonna skip one, next one, half double crochet, and then half double crochet in the skipped stitch. Skip one, next one, half double crochet, and half double crochet in the skipped stitch. Now again, the longer you make this blanket, you're gonna have to be mindful to pay attention to your stitches and not use a stitch two times. This is something that happened to me a couple times. And so when you reach the very end of your blanket, if you're left with two stitches, you know that you accidentally skipped a, or added too many stitches here in the rest of the work. Because when you get to the very end of your work, you should be left with only one stitch remaining and that one stitch is where you put your last half double crochet before you chain two to turn, okay? So it's a good way to gauge your work. This is one of those blanket projects that after you get the rhythm, you really don't need to count every single row, which is amazing making this blanket one of those really nice relaxing blankets that you can just go. But I do highly suggest that every couple of rows, you give it a count. And the count you are looking for is going to be the same number of stitches that were in row one. So for example, my row one had 18 stitches. So my row two, my row three, my row four should all have 18 stitches, okay? And that just counting every few rows will help you to eliminate getting through the blanket and halfway through, you're noticing that your blanket is starting to angle or be off and it helps you to eliminate which rows were on target and where you can see you got off target. Okay, it really helps. So last stitch, one half double crochet. Row three is done. And that's it. Now how do you end the row? Last row of the blanket is your choice. You can choose to just continue this half double crochet cross stitch pattern all the way up to the last row and then tie off your yarn and be finished. Or you can choose to have your very last row be a row of half double crochets, just one half double crochet stitch in each stitch if you want, but honestly, you really can't see that this is just a row of half double crochets pronounced enough to try to create symmetry. So I'm gonna let that be up to you on what you wanna do for row or for your very last row. Okay, I do however want to show you if you're working this blanket and you run out of yarn, what you can do. Yep, I am going to be showing you how to do the invisible knot trick. If you have already done the invisible knot, you already know how to do the invisible knot, you can skip this little section, but it's really fast. Okay, so let's say I'm gonna cut my yarn off right here. There we go. Okay, let's say you're crocheting, 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 and you're getting to the end of your skein. You're running out of yarn and you need to attach more yarn to keep going with your project. Here's what you're going to do. Take the yarn that you're running out of that's attached to your project and stretch it out that direction. Take your brand new skein of yarn that you wanna add to your project. Have that yarn go in that direction butt them up against each other. Take this side, two fingers, wrap them around your two fingers. Take the little tail here, wrap it over between your two fingers and have it come out facing towards your fingernails. Pull and it'll create a little knot on this side make our way over to the other section. Two fingers, wrap around your two fingers, little tail, take the tail over 
between your fingers and have it poke out towards your fingernails. Take that side, pull so it forms a little knot there. You got a knot here, you got a knot here. Take this yarn, this yarn, pull. And this forms the very strong invisible knot that isn't going anywhere. It's super strong. Take your scissors. You can actually cut these tails really close to the knot and it doesn't go anywhere. I've tried this, I've used this multiple times and that knot is good. Okay, there we go. And then you continue your project without skipping a beat. So let me get through this section, get to that join. Because you're using the same color yarn, here, let me get there. Perfect, okay, stopping. Turning my work over. There's the join. There's the little knot, but it's camouflaged. You can't find it, you can't see it because the yarn is the exact same color. It's also this really nice bulky yarn. So now you can continue on with your work without having any ends to weave in, yes! And without having anything to address at the end of the project except for your beginning tail and your end tail. That's it. Isn't that a beautiful thing? All right, so now you are off and continuing making your blanket. Stay tuned right after this for the chart so you can decide which blanket you want to make and how much yarn you're gonna need for it and how many foundation row chains, approximately, that you're gonna need and approximately how many rows you're gonna need to complete your blanket. It is honestly the softest blanket ever. It's amazing, makes for a fantastic gift for an adult, for a baby, for a child, teen, you're going to love this. I promise. All right. You have a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Well, that's it. That's how you make the Sugar Plum Fairy Blanket. I hope you had a lot of fun. If you did, you might also really enjoy these videos right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for crocheting with me, spending time with me today. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.